When we talk nitrogen cycle for an aquarium, we're talking about the process where uh, animal waste, like um, ammonium really, uh, and, and the decaying plant and, and food matter that pollute the, uh, the water are converted to a more livable form by uh, beneficial bacteria that you set up, a colony of bacteria that uh, uh, eats ammonium and turns it into nitrites. And then a second uh, set or culture of bacteria will eat those nitrites, which are toxic to the fish, and turn them into nitrates, which is least toxic to the fish in their swimming environment, their habitat. So that's the process that we call the nitrogen cycle. The ammonium is turned to nitrites, and the nitrites are turned into nitrates, which then, every time we change the water on a cleaning cycle, like um, maybe once a month, we lower the concentration of nitrates to a more livable level. This next slide shows the relative concentrations of the various chemicals that we referred to. The first curve, uh, the red curve, are the ammonia levels. Uh, the axis on this is the number of days that it takes for the concentrations of these uh, various uh, chemicals to uh, rise to a peak and then be brought down to a manageable level by the bacteria. So the ammonia, at uh, well, it takes four or five days, it reaches a peak of like six parts per million on this graph. And then the bacteria begin to develop and you see the yellow curve start to uh, uh, establish the nitrite levels and as the bacteria begin to absorb the ammonia the ammonia concentration in the water drops to zero and the nitrite rises at about three weeks 25 days or so it'll rise to maybe uh, 12 parts per million on this graph and at that peak you start to see the green curve come up which is the second set of bacteria creating nitrates. And then after like 30 days or more, the nitrite concentration has been brought to zero and now we're left with just the nitrates and the nitrogen cycle is complete. The tank is said to be established at that point. It's kind of a, uh, a neat chemical reaction. It's uh, ecologically uh, sound. It's really uh, you know, develop the uh, the hobby of aquariums to the level that it's uh, risen to today dramatically since the 60s and 70s uh, you know when all this was uh, established I'm using a penguin power filter to facilitate the development of this nitrogen cycle here you see me testing it in my kitchen sink it's a uh, powerful filter that draws the water up a not long nozzle or spout and, uh, and draws it past some uh, uh, cloth filter elements to you know, filter out particulate matter. And then the water flows over these water wheels. You see the pleated wheels in this uh, photo. And on those uh, mat-like surfaces, it's like blotter paper, uh, the bacteria will grow. And the idea of the spinning wheel, they call it a bio wheel in their literature, is that the water uh, is in contact and keeps those uh, pleats moist, but it also spins in the open air and the uh, bacteria get uh, moisture as well as, as oxygen. That way it, uh, it establishes and has an ideal growing environment for uh, bacteria. The pump itself circulates uh, 350 gallons per hour, so a 50-gallon tank is circulated many times per hour, and uh, the water is thoroughly uh, cleansed and treated by the bacteria. In this next clip, we show you how the power filter actually works. Okay, now we have a uh, 
let's have a look at the inner workings of the, the pump. Here is the impeller. You see it, uh, the permanent magnet that rotates, uh, does all the pump action. And then this, of course, in, uh, is the uh, tube that draws the water in from the uh, in from the tank. Uh, the other guy had this thing extended to way down into the tank, but it works a little better up close, like I've got it now. So we'll try it this way. Should work fine. Okay, so got the penguin working. Both sides are uh, doing well. I find I can balance out the speed by regulating the flow from the uh, from the pump from one side to the other. So yeah, I'm learning a little bit about this gizmo. And then there's uh, these. Uh, pivots, or whatever you call them, the holders of the uh, rotating shaft that I've uh, scraped a little bit off the end so that the wheel sits a little further down into this water stream, see, and catches in the, uh, in the pleats. That makes it turn uh, a little bit faster, a little bit better, and more I guess you would say robust, huh? Today, we're playing with power heads. I got these from the guy that uh, sold me the aquarium. Got a nice package deal, so to speak. There's three of them here, different uh, varieties. This one's a, uh, a Rio Plus 800. It's rated at 13 watts. I suppose it does a couple of hundred gallons a minute. Or an hour, I mean. This one is a uh, a Maxi Jet 1200, and it says uh, something of the order of 300 gallons per hour. This is by the Marine Land people that make my penguin uh, filter. This one, what is it? It's called Zoomed Aquatics. Their model PS20, uh, 160 gallons per hour. But it articulates, this little nozzle uh, articulates back and forth. So now we'll, uh, we'll try to run them, okay? Okay, here goes the power. This one's going, look at that. Whoa! And this one's going. And this one I has trouble with the uh, DC cord. No, now he's running. See it articulate there? Maybe I'll have to zoom in on these. Okay, here we are. So now here's the power filter mounted on the aquarium with a long snoot this time. You'll see the uh, bio wheels are uh, spinning away up there. And there's the filter media that we use for uh, particulate matter. There's a flossy uh, side and then a bag of uh, activated charcoal. Takes out uh, toxins. Now we get to the interesting part. We've seen now the uh, hardware side of water conditioning. This is the chemistry side. These are test reagents for uh, testing for ammonia, nitrite levels, and nitrate levels. And there's even one for pH. That's the subject of the next film clip. Thank you.